All right, red leather, red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. That sounds dank. Ooh, you're like really loud. I shouldn't get as close. Um, like here. You sound all right. Yeah, I was like really. Yeah, you're close. a little abrasive. Yeah, I think we're good. Just turn okay. it down a little. No, bit. No, I I don't talk that loud though. So I yeah. think we'll be fine. All right, we have uh, DDA here. For those of you who know DDA Cohen. That's like your your DJ name too. Just DDA. Just DDA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not very many people have that name, so it's not Except, really hard yeah. to. Really famous soccer player. I'd say. We're just straightening out the frame, <clears throat> which is cool. Yeah, this is the first time we're doing two uh, cameras. So if you're on the podcast app, you can check us out on YouTube and see everyone's face and shit if you want to. Yeah. We're going to split screen it so you can choose who you watch. So I'm Pat Ridge. I'm 34. I'm Wickham Silva, and I'm 21. I'm DDA Cohen. I'm 56. D- <laughs> DDA doesn't want to say how old he is. <laughs> I'm 33. But the important thing, the reason I say that is because me and Wickham are both, like, really tapped into art and culture, and so is DDA. But, like, I just think the age gap gives you such a good dynamic yeah it gives me it it, yeah there's some perspective and i'm trying to be open to like his shit and he's trying to be open to my shit although i do think i've been a little more open than you have i don't think that's true have you listened to the no father i gave father john misty a chance that's a new artist i regret it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, that's you just lost points uh, for saying that. I did listen to No Effect shit, and I thought it was great. I actually really liked them. Mm. And it, I think what really sold me on them was seeing them live with Pennywise at uh, Muse Inc. Remember, we all went to New Muse Inc.? Mm-hmm. That was a great experience. And I love how they had the LGBT flag up there. Like, I thought they were dumb. LGBT? LGBTQ. Q. Actually. What's that? Lesbian... Gay, you know, as lesbian, bisexual, gay, trans, huh? Question, and yeah, Any I don't know. Question. Is one of them gay or something, or no, or are they just dope like that? They're just because I was like at a that. punk show and I felt really, well, I felt really not white, which happens at punk shows, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of skinheads. I have a friend who like was a skinhead, he was the skinhead friends, and like it was weird. And then I saw that flag, I was like, oh, that's cool. I mean, it's just like equality. Yeah, but yeah. also Fat Mike dresses up in like women's clothing. Yeah. Okay. And does like weird shit like that. Um, is my phone over there? Because I wanted to play something from the Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson uh, podcast, which millions of people are listening to. But I feel like, yeah, this, this can sort of be like a. Uh, this is just something I heard. It puts that facade of- momentary charisma on, on the on the podcast that, out, actually fail. that was cool because you can't start a long-form discussion when you've got six minutes and if you're trying to talk about something that's that's deep and difficult well you want to talk about it because you've got the access then and the opportunity but you've got your your six minutes you, you can't help but turn into sort of a glitzy entertainer he's comparing like um podcasts which is a long form it's like a long form He's talking about there being a, a technological revolution happening right now mm-hmm. because of the internet and being able to put um, uh, video and audio online uh, and have it be accessible to the world um, uh, immediately. But let's so let's finish. Come and on. so it cheapens everything. And then the other thing that I think is happening is that as the mainstream media, television in particular, dies. The, the quality people are starting to desert, like rats leaving a sea, sinking ship. I guess they're good rats if they're quality people. But, um, and then the, the, there's ever more enticement to use clickbait journalism to attract a diminishing portion of the remaining audience. Yeah. You know, it's like one of the things that's happened. So if you look at the five major indices of violent crime in the United States, they de- they, they've declined by 50% in 25 years. It's absolutely beyond comprehension. It's so good. This includes violent gun crime, by the way. And yet the reports of violence in media have gone up and up and up and up. You think, well, what's going on? It's like, well, it's, it's 
it's clickbait. It's the, it's the equivalent of clickbait. And then to turn everything into a polarized political discussion takes no real intellectual energy. But it's also driven by the death spiral of the classic media, I think. And I think that's actually why the polarization seems to be so acute now. Some of it is genuine, but some of it is some of it is the consequence of this underlying technological transformation and the death throes of the smoke signalers, fundamentally. What you're talking about when you're, when you're saying people, especially radical leftists, have to concede certain points. So that's... Does, does that make sense to you? Look, totally. it's, what's really funny is I had this conversation literally this morning. Um, basically, I was talking about how like CNN, their mm. whole entire platform... Right. It didn't used to be like that. It was news journalism. This is the story. This is what it is. There's no truth. There's no false. It's, this is fact. Right. And now because of the current situation of where we are in America and politics, drama, polarization, argumentative events is what rates. Right. So CNN, every single show now on CNN has to have panelists. It has to be a hot button discussion to get hot takes which includes like which turns into clickbait online which gains ratings so it's not even about the news and like kind of what it is it's let me get as many polarizing figures as possible on at the same time and get a crazy ram fight that's going to go viral and get more ratings but but what i i I didn't really play the i should have played it like a minute or two before because he's sort of explaining why that's happening Mm -hmm. Like that dying. is happening yeah. and you're noticing it. And that's like, yeah, but the reason it's, but yeah, they're dying. He it's said, like, he said Newsweek is a hollow shell of what it used to be or Newsweek is gone. And time is like, whatever, like all the, they're slowly dying. I think, yeah. I think, I think podcasts are pretty much podcasts and like digital content that's made by the independent person like you guys is the future of what content is in the world totally and i you know i saw the you see kanye on jimmy kimmel again yeah and like he was trying to tackle such a complex topic of like what is do you think trump is good for black people and kanye was like taking a second to think about it and jimmy's like and let's go to commercial and that made kanye look so bad and like this whole idea of like going to commercial and like yeah. you get 13 minutes to talk look about I, it. I i saw that and i was super upset by it I thought he was. Tr- I thought he was set up. He was to be dude. ambushed, and I think it was. I think. I think Kanye. So, if you don't know me, people know. Like Kanye is one of my biggest inspiration of what I do, why I create ma- music, and that fact. And I think he was willing to tackle a subject that complex on a platform that's an entertainment platform. Yeah, Jimmy for- Kimmel's an entertainment platform, and what he wanted to do was make Kanye look like an idiot. So instead of letting Kanye answer the question which he probably would have done very well i'm just gonna cut him off and act like he didn't have an answer that really pissed it was me rude. off dude and like jimmy has done that before like with uh he had some twitch streamers on mm-hmm. and he was like playing video games with them and all he did was just undercut he was like people dude, just watch a- you play video games i'm like yeah well people watch you like tell ask jennifer lawrence about an anecdote about mm-hmm. how you slipped in the shower once so what's what's more stupid. Yeah, yeah, They're both yeah, fucking yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, oh, it's funny that you just said that is Pat, like, I think it was two, maybe three months ago I was here. And we were having, the, I was having a conversation with Wickham about, who were we talking to about pa- Twitch? Mm. And like, we, I was talking to you, you and you were, we were discussing this. Someone, someone's like, someone wasn't how down. the hell can you just watch someone play video games? Yeah. And you were like, how the hell can you watch baseball? <laughs> And you know what I mean? Like, how the hell can you watch baseball? And I'm sitting there. I'm like, it is no different. It's competitive and it's nature. And like, if you want to learn more about that craft, a lot of golfers love to watch Tiger Woods and golf. Yeah. Get it's a game. It's engaged. It's, engaged. Well, it's, it's, it's a all game. a game. More people watch Twitch streams now officially than baseball now. I believe. Okay. It. So can we, I just want to point something out. Like, yeah. Like, so I was tr- like, we get off topic, which is fine, but I just want to make sure that we get back to what we were saying, which is that, and, and I just want you to be conscious of this, Wickham. Yeah. Like, because because to have these long form conversations, like they can go in different directions. So like, I was trying to make a point, and it just went off into like 
twits like <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel, but what, Kanye. Land. K- K- Wickham just brought it into he Kanye. Brought it to, I don't <laughs> know. I'm just no, here having a conversation. Yeah, it's, I know it's fine. But, like, uh, but what, so, what, so here's the the, the go point, back to the, the point is that YouTube and the podcast shit is literally killing CNN. I agree. So. So CNN, so all the old smoke signal news stations, they're dying. Like the ratings smoke are falling. They're, they're, they're dying. It's like what happens when, when something, it's like when fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2 gets thrown into the fucking lava and he's just like, ah! Yeah, yeah. He's like frantically trying to stay alive. Yeah. Like they're dying and we're watching them scrabble and like scratch the walls and just like they're, 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 they're desperate to, to stay alive. Mm-hmm. And they don't care if they look bad. They don't care if you look bad. They don't care if they're polarizing a nation. They don't care Mm. if people are fighting. They don't care. They just need ratings because they're fucking dying. I agree. That's Mm. like kind of what he's saying. And when he put it that way, it helped me like really understand. And I just kind of want to like, like I want to like show like my parents, you know, like my dad is like a Fox junkie. Oh really? Straight up. So, okay. I, so is my dad. Like I'm gonna like Every have them. Dad. I want to have them like listen. Damn. I want to have them like listen to this podcast. Because, Why don't you have them on? I mean, sure. Um, um, well, I think another reason that um, the, I don't think he media, can sit still for an hour. Yeah. The media is dying is because like also their apparent bias. Like it's so. I mean, it's just so fun switching from Fox to CNN. Yeah. And how different each one I mean, is. Well, that's another thing. It's though. crazy. If it's entertaining, that's cool. But yeah. the problem is, is they're 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 actually like affecting our nation. Hundred. Totally. Like inter- being entertained by like a uh, America's Got Talent or whatever is one thing. Like, mm. but 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 being entertained by like fake news is causing us to be like. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, humans. it really bothers, like, it, what's, what really bothers me in that fact is, like, it's really hard for me to f- see news. Yeah. It's we, like, it's really hard for me to find news. No. And, you know what I mean? Like, actual news. Well, like, we, I have one guy who I watch. Uh, his name's Philip DeFranco, and he's, like, a news guy on YouTube. I've been watching him for, like, 10 years. He's the only unbiased reporter of news. But does he have, I've like, roving found. reporters that are on the ground, like, different countries? That's, like, actually what is happening? Because all I see on the, on the news is what's happening in this current country, and that's not the news. Mm. No, he's not international. No, I get... I, when I watch my dad watching Fox, I just get... It's crazy. I just get well, Al Jazeera is pretty... Al Jazeera is great. Um, Vice News, which is like on... If you have direct Dude, TV, Vice. it's on HBA, HBO Zone. It's like Vice. Well, so Vice does a show every Friday night, but they do... Every, people don't know they do a 30-minute news show every single night on this show, on HBO oh, Zone. Wow. And it's like... It is the news. So there it mm-hmm. is. And it's like, that's that you go and, go and try to find so that shot So what was that shit Vice. with Jordan Peterson? Like that Vice interview was terrible. That, did you see that? Yeah. Where that was fucking garbage. Yeah, well, so they, some, they interviewed some, Jordan Peterson well, and they like, so they released like, it's like a five minute thing and they made him just look like a red. No, it's not five minutes. Women hating thing. And then people it's complain not. and then they released the uncut version, which was like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then people literally made like a side by side of what they cut oh, and wow. what was there. And you could see that they're clearly trying to vilify him the whole time. Not even to, men- not to mention the interviewer is just like trying to fuck them the whole time i get you but like then it's just me going back to like now it's you know so going back to what he was talking about and like the media and how like now podcast is like a long form of that kind of platform is everything's still bias everything's always going to be biased for what you listen to that creator of that content is going to want you to think maybe a little bit but when you talk to someone for three hours or two hours or you have a real conversation you get to have a lot more clarity. Agree, yeah, and I don't think Joe's biased. Uh, well, I think to DDA's point, I think you're right, but I don't. But but I think that Joe is the least biased of like anyone I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. He'll listen to like a right winger or whatever. He doesn't yes, even he should. Yeah, and he doesn't even. I, I, he, that's another thing they talk about is like labels, like. I don't even think any, I think, I, I think we need to eradicate all the labels and just talk like people. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think it's like, to me, it's, it's very, I think it's the dumbest thing in the world and almost impossible to put the whole 335 million people that are in America in two boxes. 
Yeah, it's are crazy. you out your mind? We're the human race. Yeah. We're so complex. Our thoughts are so complex. Look at everything we've created in this world. It's completely complex. Yeah. Scientists, NASA, everything. But you want to put our beliefs in liberal or conservative? Yeah, that's it. That is crazy to me. Well, and like, I, have, I have a theory about that. Actually, it hit me. Um, I think that most people don't want to do the work to kind of figure out their um like the the gray area of like having beliefs right mm -hmm. i think it's a little bit easier and i think the founding fathers knew that so they kind of put each one in its own little team you know what i mean mm -hmm. i mean but also this is another thing that bothers me it's like i'm not trying to like disrespect anything or the history of our country but the forefathers and when all that was written it was a different time and the Definitely. population, they didn't know if the population was going to go to 300 million. They didn't see the technology that was going to happen. They didn't see the twist of corruption that could happen. So like the forefathers and talking about the bill of rights and all these different things, it's very that you can't change it. Like the amendment, you can't change it. And it's, these were written at a different time. Maybe there needs to be some updates. I think and the funny thing is a hundred percent amendments. I know it's crazy. <laughs> you can change it, it, It's, it's this weird, it's this weird thing, you know? Well, well, I actually talked to like my political science professor about that. He had this crazy theory that was like the founding fathers made it like they made each side so different that like it was intentional. So that mm. would be extremely hard to get anything done. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. And well, they like wanted that. My right? point is that because this technological revolution is happening, things are getting better mm -hmm. because of the long form discussions, because we're able to put things online that are accessible to the whole world right away. Our culture is evolving. We're getting smarter. People have never been kids, especially like, you know, not even just kit. Well, not everyone is getting smarter and more like learned and mm. like woke period. So you think like the, the headlines that we see is really just complete bullshit, right? Well, we already know that. Like what CNN, puts anyone, out, what, like the world, like the polls, the predicted polls, all these different thought process, the percentages of this rights conservative. This, I think that's all bullshit. Yeah. And I think, they don't I've realize thought, I've, the I've, new gener what the generation really thinks. I've thought it's I've been thought it was bullshit since I was in high school. You're quick. I mean, it's like Joe talks about this. It's just so hard to know the truth. Exactly. Like and 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 what you hear, I always say like because my parents got divorced and I saw like how crazy each side was and I was right in the middle. Like I I I always knew my uncle used to say like believe none of what you hear and half of what you see like there's two sides to every story and then there's the truth um was, so you can't know the truth it's really interesting you say that so like having i like i grew up with my parents completely together my whole entire life and then when i like four years ago my parents split and like to see kind of it going back to that fact to see like my parents who like I had to like literally disengage of like they're not my parents. This is just a woman and a man, and like hearing the twisting of the truth for what really is the truth. You don't know what the truth is. You yeah. know what I mean? Period. No, you mm -hmm. don't. It's it's just hard. But my point is that we can be optimistic and like it's cool. And it's just like I've learned so much just in the past year like listening to more podcasts and we're evolving at an exponential rate. So it's like every year and, and we're growing in ways that we can't like see and ways we can see like, you know, electric cars, whatever, that's like physical stuff, but like emotionally and like intellectually we're growing like very, very fast and it's hard to notice, but like we're having conversations about dude, I can't wait for you to get more into Jordan because mm -hmm. like he's talking about like, some of the shit we talk about like in AA, which is like a design for living, like looking at like the weight we carry as mm. like something that gives us purpose, not, and like the journey, not the mm. destination. And That's like, amazing. and I also like how he's like clean, get your shit together before you criticize anyone else yeah. or any system ever get your shit together first. Don't throw stones, live glass houses. Yeah. It's the whole entire thing. So yeah. what's, what is that um, metaphor? 
actually mean? I, I'm not sure I totally understood that. Oh, because you're throwing. Those who throw stones don't shouldn't live in glass houses means before you criticize, mm. before you judge, before you do anything on someone else, mm-hmm. make sure your shit's all right. Or else your house. Because a lot of people are throwing a bunch of shit on people. But their shit is so fucked up that mm-hmm. they look like gigantic hypocrites yeah, and liars. Totally. So therefore, don't throw a stone if you live in a glass house. Like, I'll throw a stone, your whole house will shatter. Yeah. You know? Um, why yeah. don't we get, like, a quick, like, biopic of DDA? Okay. Well, I, is that what you'd call it? Like, just uh, like, bio. A, like a summary so people under, know like, yeah. your story. We I grew mean, up together. Yeah, so I grew up in Agora Hills. I've known Pat since I was 12 or something like that. Um, I grew up out here, uh, went to high school with everyone. And then when I was 18 or 17, I became a A&R scout for Sony RCA Records. So I started working in the music industry. I loved music growing up anyways to start. yo real quick on that point i remember you came over to my house one time and the hard drive. i took like we're talking like i don't know it must have been 50 so, gigs it was 100 100 so. 100 gigs of music like this was before like streaming and shit fat and it was just drive. like oh my god mm. so much dope shit that was like like the knife yeah and like that, the that he streets produced. no like music that no was, that, that he found that I just listen to uh, so growing up i was always a junkie a mm. junkie i a thought f- i had like a dope collection of music mm-hmm. and he just put me up on so much ill shit it was like i had an obsession of always wanting to know music that nobody else knew like ill shit mm. like nobody else knew it was my like i wanted to know what was next what the underground was kind of speaking on and what like there was this mainstream and like what would really I is what I tracked to is the underground. Like him was like your favorite. But him, CKY, was, him, him, CKY him. was that. But then like when the indie, the UK like invasion came and Maxwell Park and like. So how did you find them in a pre-internet like music? Uh, you know, what's crazy is there was inter- when pre-internet. I'm not I'm not really 50. <laughs> like I grew up on there blogs. Was, oh, I grew okay. up on blogs. Like there was blogs all the time. You know, when I was yeah. 17, 18, 19, okay. I was uh, so just, in just crazy blogs, and I would just go. And I was obsessed with producers, and I was obsessed with writers. So when I'd see a producer produce something, I would then try to research everything else that producer produced. And then mm. I became a fan of new bands. Like with hip hop, my biggest knowledge of hip hop was I would fuck with producers and fuck and I would hear a beat and like who the fuck made that beat? That was my first thing before the rapper. I'm like, who the fuck made that beat? I'm like, oh shit, DJ Premier made that beat. Then I would try to research every single artist this motherfucker produced. And then I would find new artists. And then from there, it's just a fucking nonstop yeah. domino effect of finding new beats, new producers, new features, new rappers. And I just became upset. So I'm like, I'm gonna be an A and R assign new talent. Yo, it was the biggest I wouldn't say a mistake, right? Because I would never get to tomorrow if I didn't do what I did today, right? So mm-hmm. everything is a learning process for me and everything gets me to the next level. Mm-hmm. But it was, it, it destroyed my love for music. Mm, really? Having to work at a, you know, shout out to Sony. Like I, they're my record label now, but like having to work as like an A&R and kind of try to sign band. Cause I grew up, I didn't think, was a kid, I don't think about, oh, is that singer good looking? Uh, is that person marketable enough? What's the single? So you had to start thinking I don't about the think business. of any of that. I'm like, this is amazing music that made me feel a certain way. Um, the mass has to listen to the, hear this band, right? They yeah. have something to say. And then when I started working in the music industry, it was just a completely different perspective. And I hated music. Budgets. We don't have the money to sign this band. They're not worth the money. It was like, wow. and, and it killed my love. So I was walking down Sunset Boulevard one day. And uh, the, someone asked me if I want to be a model and an actor. And I was like, am I going to make better money than I am in the music industry? Turned out to be the head of Wilhelmina Models. Um, he signed me. And then six months later, I, I moved. Isn't Addison on that? That's just, that's crazy. Yeah. And then six months later, I, I they sent me to Australia. Yeah, Addison is. We just did a video for this girl that's okay. just signed with them. But then, so that's he, sick. So he just fucking goes to Australia. Yeah. So I, I just wow. went to Australia. Like I was chilling with Brian. I was like seeing Pat all the time. My, my, that's my brother, my younger yeah. brother. Mm-hmm. And I and I just left to Australia. I was supposed to go for three months. 
I fell in love with it. I fell in love with going to a place where I could start completely new. The culture was very LA. Where in Australia? Sydney. Okay. And it was like a smaller, ver- it, it was just like I could start my life over again. Mm. And but, like I'm away from everything I knew. But like mm. we were like, oh, we'll see. Like this is kind of crazy. Yeah. Like dude's just going to leave and he thinks he's just going to make it. Right. Next yeah. thing we know, like. I know what happens next. Yeah. No, do you? Yeah. I've, I've looked the idea yeah, up on the internet. He knows my no, like my boy Jesse like went to Australia and saw this fool on like a bus. Yeah. Like he was like on America's yeah, Got I, Talent. I know. I, he I was host, like a fucking or was it, star. Was it top model? No, it was Aust- I hosted Australia's Next Top like Model. Like if you're yeah. in Australia, like you know who you this know fool is. Yeah. Like he's a, he was a fucking, he became a massive star in Australia. Yeah. I remember you telling me. So pretty much I, I, it was crazy. I pretty much like parlayed modeling into like TV into hosting TV shows, hosting radio shows, producing radio shows, producing content, just doing a bunch of things that I want to do because Australia is very small mm-hmm. and whatever the fuck you dream of doing, you have a small community that you can make that shit happen. You can be a wow. big fish in you a can, small 100%. pond. And the thing is the experience and learning my craft, but with those medias and like with these doors opening for opportunities, I fell back in love with music. So I started DJing again just to start playing music and loving music. But shit, like I have such an ego that when I was listening to music, I'm like, yo, I just want to create my own music. I don't want to play other people's music. I want to create my own music. Yeah. So I just started grinding, creating my own music. And then slowly that just became the focus. And all this TV stuff, all this other stuff meant not like it didn't, it didn't really mean anything to me. Hmm. Like it wasn't my passion. Like I, I could stare at a fucking screen for three days straight working well, you, you, on a kick drum. How creative can you be as like, oh, a yeah. pers- as a TV personality? Yeah. So this is an yeah. am- amazing topic to talk about, right? Everyone said, damn, bro. Like you have the life, like you have the life, right? Like you could, you're on TV, radio, you're doing what you want. There's no creative expression. I'm hmm. being told I'm giving a script. I'm getting told guidelines of what to do. You're very in a box and you're not kind of in control of your own destiny, right? So you're always like this, okay, the show was over. How am I going to get my next show? Who, who's going to hire me Mm. to be like, and I wish I had the thought process I have now. I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to go online and create my own content and be the master of my destiny. Right. Which I feel I am now with music, but I never thought about that. So you're very, you can't be very creative. So my only creative outlet was music. So basically did everything I did in Australia. And then last year I came to LA to just pursue my music. Oh, it was that recent last year. I mean, I met you like a few months after I moved here. Oh, wow. But you, you, you would come by, we should all be clo- as close as possible to the mics. You would come by like while you were like making that transition mm-hmm. for like a while. Like I remember he would come by the studio and mm-hmm. like you, you were kind of like wanting to be in, and we were kind of like, we were like in that world. Mm-hmm. I was in that world and, um, you, you had like a really, he had a really strong desire to like learn about it. And like, it was my love. Like, yeah. like when I, cause I would come back to visit my parents, you know what I mean? So I'd come back home like for Christmas and stuff like that. But I was always see Pat and like, I was always drawn to my friendship with Pat just based on our pure love for music. Like he understood a language that I felt I understood very well, his music taste. And I was always a fan of his music and, what was going on from like War Machine, Bel Airs to Hyper Crush. Like I was a, a fan of what he was trying to do. Mm-hmm. So when he was producing, I was always, I always wanted to learn what the hell this dude was doing in when, the studio. When, I was so curious. Wind, wind builds. builds. When, I remember when I first heard an EDM wind build and I was fucking obsessed. I mean, it's all about Wait, builds. A wind build? Like, you know how you, you sure. like, well, no, but uh, you know, Wickham knows what's up. Like he just made the intro. And it's all about these like, like risers, a build. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. about these sound Rises, effects and before the creating like dynamic, Cli- like climactic moments. But I remember mm. I was just obsessed with it. So because well, when you were coming around, that was the time when it was like, 
build, drop, build, drop. Ow. And it's funny because as he was starting to hate like the entertainment world, you I was starting to it. hate. And there's something to be said about like whatever industry you're working in. It it's I think it's very important for you to protect your love for it mm-hmm. any any way you can, which for me right now in our industry is like trying as hard as you can to to a find the love in what you're doing and be like do things that you want to do if you can i agree you know um or else you will start to hate it i agree but so then you moved out here Mm. Uh, so i moved out here and his production just like uh, you literally surpassed everything his production is crazy and like i i was like whoa this shit sounds like so good and for the past couple years i feel like your shit's been sounding really really really, yeah i mean mean, it's always a learning process i'm very insecure so like i'm a very insecure especially with my music so like i never know i don't like know if it's there you know Mm -hmm. i have a pretty strong feeling when i play something for pat that i'm like i think this is it yeah but it's always like but it's also you, you need validation. Yeah, hundred. As a, me, from like a music standpoint, validity is like it's a lot. So and do it's, I. It's, totally. a, it's a business. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's actually you know what? Thinking about like when I came. So to finish up the story and go back to this this topic of validity is I came back and I was coming back to like move here and like work on my project because I'm signed to Sony as an artist. So I was going to produce music and like go back to Australia. And then I got Lyme disease. So I found out I had stage three Lyme disease. And so what people don't know, Lyme disease is a disease that you get from a tick and it goes into your body. And if you deal, if you usually get a bullseye rash, if you see it within a month, you take a couple antibiotics, you'll be all right. If you don't see it and it stays in your system, there's no cure for it. And then it slowly starts deteriorating and destroying your uh, neuro system. You said bullseye? What do you yeah, mean? It what looks like it? a bullseye, like a giant red rash that looks like a bullseye on you. So there's like rings, like a bullseye? Yeah, imagine like a rings, yeah. like a spider bite, but with multiple rings. You'll okay. know it. You'll see it right away and be like, okay, shit, right? I yeah. never had this rash. Only a certain percentage gets that rash anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, just always check for ticks. But uh, it destroys your uh, immune system. It destroys your neurological system. So I started getting paralysis. Like my face would go numb. My legs would go numb. And then it turned into epilepsy. So I started getting seizures, really bad seizures. This was after you came to LA. This is like, like, this is probably like all this really bad stuff happened probably like three months after I met you. Okay. So I got super sick. And as I got, when I was in the hospital, I thought my whole life, like, why did I have so much anxiety? Why was this stress? Why was this giant wave over me of like, I came to LA. I need to fucking make it. I need to fucking get this. I need to be the fucking shit. I need to be, is this crazy chase of like validity Mm. of always needing validation. Like any TV show I did, it better be number one. If mm-hmm. it's not number one, like I'm a fucking, you know, like I'm a failure. Yeah. Like it's this, I've always had this crazy chase for validation of people to say like, good job, like really good job. And it, it it's, it's weird. And it's a weird thing I deal with all the time. You know, even when I, like last night I played Pat music and it's still like I've played, I've been in rooms, studio rooms nonstop and it's still this do you fuck with it? Like yeah. this valid, I need to be validated. Yeah. I can't just fucking make the art and put it out and, and the myself loving it is validation. Mm. You, you actually can and, and, and you can reach that mm. point. It's hard. It's a yeah, high yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. saying I have, I know I, but I know you haven't. No, definitely not. We're, we're all working on that. Mm-hmm. I think that that's, like I was just with Brills the other day, Sammy. Mm, yeah. And he has this new project called LS Dream. Okay. Have you heard it? It's nah. fucking sick. We're going to, I'm sure you're going to meet him yeah. soon and whatever. He, uh, and, and he has a quote 
on his Instagram, like blessed are those who don't look for outward validation and they're like confident in their own shit. Mm. And I, 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 it, it really like hit home for me. And it's something I've been talking a lot about with my therapist. And Mm. like, when we start to go to that place, we have to combat that thinking with like actual facts and logic Mm. that we know is true. Mm. I think for you also, one thing you left out about your story, which I think is probably the most important part Mm. of like who you are is like how you looked physically oh uh, yeah before you got your shit yeah. together so i grew up um i was super overweight i think i've seen a picture yeah of yeah you. so from like from grade from ever since i was i remember so was jason Evigan yeah so that's crazy by the way and gus and i see a similarity in all of you guys but jason has somehow surpassed it with like religion yeah, and like yeah. his incredible success uh, you can't even deny what yeah so like my whole age growing up to like 18 i was just overweight so it's like from i mean it, so it that stays stem, with it, that you. stays like the the fact yeah. of like wanting to change not being good enough a lot of like rejection from like females growing up like crazy one probably gave me a crazy ocd gave me a crazy drive which i'm very thankful for right but gave me an extremist mentality Mm -hmm. it's like i'll never fucking be like that i'll never fucking be like that again Mm -hmm. i'll be better than anyone you know what i mean you know the first time i saw you was backstage at agenda Uh for tyler and asap i didn't know who you were i didn't know that we knew you or anything you're wearing this big hat i was like damn is that fool like a supermodel like, what's, wow. who is that guy dude. and then you were like i passed out i was like oh it's that dude yeah and it's like but what's crazy is like like i grow up and it's like having this conversation it's 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 almost like a it's a almost self-realization as i speak about it mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i'm talking to you guys with like a, a very self-realization and if you ask me i think pat talked to me when I was in, like when I came, when I first moved here and I was like at the studio all the time and he was like, you know, how is like the, cause like Pat knows that I'm here and I'm like trying to grind it. And I was so like, everything's fucking lit. You know what I mean? Like everything's amazing. Everything's amazing. I'm always like, everything's amazing. And I'm a very positive person, right? I believe now I'm more positive than I ever was trying to make people believe I was. Mm. I always wanted people to believe I was very po- like very happy, very positive. This fucking guy that's got like it's always going fucking good. Mm-hmm. And when something with my health was undeniable, an undeniable like I was in bed for months. You know what I it's mean? A ne- it's an undeniable negative. Yeah, it's an undeniable negative. There's no way you could fucking. You flip can't it. spin. <laughs> and then there's no way you can like, yo, I'm fucking lit. Like I'm paralyzed. Like I, that shit doesn't exist. That's called humble. It's a humble Humility. pie. Like it was my rock bottom. Because you understand, in entertainment industry, you're out for three months. It's you're out of out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. As we go every year that time gets less that if you're like out for a month, people forget, you know what I mean? So me coming here to work on my record and then getting super sick and I've been away from Australia for 18 months. It's like, I had to like really reflect on who the fuck I am. What, what this is whole things about. What the fuck does this all mean? Mm -hmm. And like validity was this crazy thing that I, I still will probably always chase. Yeah, Mm -hmm. you will. I'll always chase it. But that humbling thing grounds you and it it reminds you what's important. Like, I think that we both have experienced similar things, which is why we got sober because alcohol and drugs brought us to our knees the same way Lyme disease Mm -hmm. brought you to your knees. And when you Mm -hmm. get brought to your knees, you look, you start, you know, you start really looking inwardly, but also like getting kind of spiritual. Uh, so that's the I never was spiritual I was ne- like I'm never fucking spiritual I was always like yeah fuck it there's no there's nothing out there super atheist we fucking live we die we sit in a fucking dark hole so we are fucking live hard yeah. and do whatever the fuck you want very like I'm gonna fucking conquer the world mentality yeah. hedonism and the last four months, five months, I've been fucking God moments. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Of s- the most spiritual I've ever been. 
I fucking pray every morning, every night. I'm wow. very, I'm very, I'm very, I don't got it, you know? So there's a higher energy to me, a higher being to me that like, if whatever I put out, it's going to get back to me. What do you so mean? if I live a life of negativity and I live a life of controlling and fucking pessimistic mm-hmm. attitudes and me, 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 then I'm going to get that negativity. Yeah. And my life's going to be full of negativity. Trying to be the director of the show. It, it's what you put out. I truly believe the universe brings back to you. So I've been in this very spiritual, very humbling place that I've never been in my whole entire life. Wow. That's like a gift that we totally. were bestowed. The gift of desperation. Yeah. And I remember like seeing you when you were coming around and you just got signed. And I remember Jade was there and I was like, I can't remember exactly like what I was saying, but it was sort of like, there's nothing to chase, bro. Mm-hmm. Like we're good right here, right now. Oh yeah, yeah. This is like, like let's when I just, first came back. Let's just be happy in this moment, mm-hmm. and which is a crazy thought. And, 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 yeah, but he and he just wasn't. I wasn't. Ta- I was like, you, what's you, this full time? No, but you were kind of. He was like, you were fucking with it. You like wanted to fuck with it, but you can't like tell somebody that all this fame and success isn't gonna fix them. They mm-hmm. have to experience that on their own and, and and on some level i think we all kind of still do think it will mm. i think i definitely have like a a closer i've been able to see that closer from actually having some of that mm. and knowing like what it did to me which wasn't what i wanted it to do to me but like that lyme disease shit happened and like it's just like sometimes God does for us what we can't do for ourselves. Hundred percent. And I remember Jade was like, she was like, yeah, like that's that's what I'm trying to say. Like she heard me like talking to him about this shit. So like Jade's just, my fiance. And I was like, be happy, like, and she like, I could tell that she was like really fucking with what I was saying to him mm-hmm. because like women, I feel like have like they're less driven because they're not expected to be kings of the world some are like trip on some Mm. crazy shit but most of them are like family totally child Mm, like relationship like it took me forever to like see veronica right in front of me so she was kind of like yo but um so to go back to the whole like presenting this image of perfection i was sharing at my meeting about this the other day and i asked like why would we I mean, you just basically broke it down, but like, I think that like, we can't hear this enough. Like, Mm. why would we present an image of perfection to the world when, when we're not, I mean, why would we ever even try to be perfect? Why would we want everyone to think we're perfect? I don't fucking know. And what, you know, you do know, and you already Mm. said it. You want the validation. Yeah. But why? Mm. But I, I, well, yeah. See, cause my thing is the validation, right? But that's just because I, I, if now, if I show myself completely 100% and the different sides of me and the humility, it's just going to open me up to like another audience, a bigger audience. Yeah. That chase for validation never goes anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's if, never ending. If it's if never you still want to be validated, you're still going to be chasing this, this validation. You but, know but, but, I mean? so you just yeah. said it like, You just said it like if you open yourself up and you allow the truth to be seen, Mm. right? Imperfections and all. Mm. Like that's so the the reason that we present that image is because deep down inside, we we really somewhere we think we're super flawed and like worthless Um, and useless and uh, and we'd have nothing to offer and it's just this big fake thing that we, 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 we like, tr- we, we, f- we accidentally stumbled across like a dope sound or, mm. or you became a model cause like someone <laughs> mm. saw it you was a flu. or like That's you just, real shit, you just dude. like <laughs> shot, you just shot enough on your camera to like, Oh, it's not, I'm not really like that ill. Like yeah. I just kind of like edited it right. And like put wow. it together. I just so, used some fucking plugins that were done. Yeah, dope. like like people used to say like I think about that shit every fucking day. <laughs> but like the I'm truth I'm like, yo, this is a fluke. <laughs> so but that's not that's actually not the truth. The truth is that like we've put in a lot of work 
and we are dope, mm. but sometimes we're not. Mm. Like sometimes we make mistakes and like, and like when we're in that place of insecurity, like, and, and the chick, the wife or the girlfriend goes like, oh, you forgot to get me that thing. And, and you're like, no, like, or like, or like she says something like, this is where I see it super clearly when Veronica like points out something I did wrong and I just like defend it to the death. It's so funny. Like I will refuse. I will like, I, I have fights with my fiance so fucking much. I mean, because you don't want to. I, I hate that she's going to fucking hear this. No, you but probably. Like mo most of the fights that we have is like, she'll be like, she'll say something like, oh, I sh uh, like you didn't get me. What I like say, you didn't get me some food. Right. Mm -hmm. And instead of being like, I and I what I truly feel is like, fuck, I'm a fuck. I didn't I didn't get her food. I didn't think about her enough to get her her food. Mm -hmm. But what I'll say is you didn't fucking ask me. Right. That's it. Because you're trying to display. You didn't fucking ask me yeah. to get your food. Because like it's your flaw. But really, it's like I feel guilt. And ashamed, therefore I'll blame. So, mm. so it's like it's like you're still trying to protect that image of perfection. Yeah. It's almost as if we're mutants. I thought of this analogy; it might not be the best one, but like we are mutants. Like we're just like our skin color is different, mm. right? So this image of perfection is covering like all of our skin, and all you need to do is see a tiny bit of our skin to realize that we're a mutant because our skin is like blue. Mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying. So like, I don't even want you to see a little flaw because mm. as soon as you see that little flaw, the truth will be revealed that mm -hmm. I'm flawed mm -hmm. and that's just bullshit. Mm. And we have to change that way of thinking. It's like, oh shit, I'm sorry, babe. I forgot your thing. Yeah. I don't like, you, you know, know what? I'm going to, so easy. it would yeah. be so easy. <laughs> it would be like, the <laughs> easy. And, you know, it's fucked up. It's in, and, and like, I want to ask this question. Cause it's something I will find myself like when I, if I'm like in a pub, like a work setting or like people I'm working with or friends or shit like that, I'll like, Oh, yo, yo, I'll go back. I'll get you some food, bro. No problem. Like, yo, no, my bad. I'll go get you some fucking food. Mm -hmm. Do we want to go? Ooh. But like, I'll go crazy on my chin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So true. And it's like, why is it that like, I'll go in on the person that loves me the most and knows like every part of me. The yeah, most. like you can't fool her. You can't fool her. She already you, knows. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's weird. Well, that yeah, that that's interesting. But just 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 one other really quick thing before we go into that part of it, because I think that there's something interesting there is that like if you know what's happening, it makes it easier. Like as soon as that happens now, I go, oh, I'm I'm about to try to defend my perfection. And that's not real. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to be real. That's, you know, that's very, it's, it's very easy to like talk about that now. It's not that easy to, to pull, to catch yourself. No, it's not easy, but it is possible. And mm -hmm. I think the more that we're aware of it, I mean, I just asked you why, and I don't want, you know what? Fuck it. I'm, I actually don't care if this turns into like a therapy session. Cause it's fine. This is like, I think, <laughs> what? I think, I think we crossed that line a long time. No, ago. I, just, I was just, I, I was just going to say, I don't want this to seem like a therapy session, just but talking, I'm but just if talking that's back at both of you, but if that's what it's like, if that's the direction it's going into, then that's fine. Because I know a lot of people that are just like this, that seek validation, mm. that present an image of perfection because they're afraid for the, the world to see that they're flawed. But the truth is, is that we're not flawed. Our flaws actually make us who we are yeah. and they make us dope. Like I that's agree. okay. I agree. And, and, and I asked you, why are you presenting an image of perfection? You didn't actually even know the answer. Although you did, but you didn't consciously give. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. it's weird. It's like knowing the truth and like being emotionally connected to it and having it be like a reflex thing is different. They're two different things. And I think like the, the, the more we talk about this stuff and the more we, it's at the forefront of our brain, like the easier it will be to catch ourselves in those moments. So like, mm -hmm. you know, next time like we do something wrong and we're trying to defend it and it feels more intense than it should Mm -hmm. that's like a red flag. Like sometimes like when I'm feeling like the world's about to end over like me forgetting to wash the dishes, mm. it's like, 
my therapist, yeah, yeah. My, my therapist always says like, you should get pulled up before that. Moment, it's a trigger. Though. It's a trigger. It's triggering my insecurity mm. and it's triggering my, the critic in my mind that, that thinks I'm flawed and not per- And it's like, whenever you're feeling something more intensely than you should be, that's an indicator that it's not the thing. Mm. It's like more than the thing. It's mm. like, it's like that deep seated insecurity that we grew up with that like, for whatever reason is just like there. And the only way to, combat that is to like tell yourself yeah i actually am oh i'm a good person i've accomplished a lot i work hard i and you literally start listing all the things that you've accomplished and the things that you've done and the things Mm. that make you uh, a a a a a unique individual of worth like mr rogers said yeah and i feel like me and pat literally just went through that with like me Mm -hmm. like i would keep fucking up like i'm having this issue with like being like responsible and not forgetting things yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. like writing shit down in my notes I'm but like i would just there. keep forgetting shit and then pal would be like where is this oh wait I- bring the almond milk and i like this everything and at one point in front of everyone at the studio he was like you forget a lot of shit huh oh <laughs> was, shit and like it, i was just like fuck dude like no, at told- first at first it was like anger like resentment at pat like fuck him like, like he's expecting he pull that shit? too much of me and like yeah. he should have pulled me aside and then like wow that kind of like went away and then i really looked at like why am i so mad right now and it really like and we talked about this on a previous episode it brought me back to like high school where like i was diagnosed with like severe add and adhd mm-hmm. and all my teachers were just constantly on me for forgetting everything like wow. completely responsible to the point where like i got expelled from high school Mm. and like how to go to a continuation school and like so Mm. when he says that it triggers all that shit so it like really fuck with me on a different level and i got uh, expelled like like four times (laughs) so i I, I get what you're feeling yeah and uh so like so then i just like opened up to him i just was honest dude and like Mm. that's the other thing too is like when you do feel that way being honest about it being like i fucked up really gets this different reaction out of people like people aren't used to people owning up to shit like when you sometimes when you own up to shit like a hundred percent and take full responsibility the other person's like whoa i think i think uh being humble and putting pride aside is a very hard thing to do yeah so and it's a very rare thing that i i I wish i did more and i'm trying i've been trying to do more lately um that I think a lot of people just don't. So when you go to someone with empathy and like take the blame for it and like actually apologize like truthfully, the human being is just going to accept that because it's so rare. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally. It's going form. to someone and with humility. It's the truest and, form. And, and then empathy. when I like brought it up to Pat, I was like, listen, dude, like I've been fucking up and like I'm working on it. Like here are my notes. Like I'm writing everything down mm-hmm. and everything. Like he totally like with like, compassion i was like all right cool yeah i mean it's not like if if i was like fuck you dude like it would have just made it worse it's not like i don't already know so like when you're seeing it it's like that's i actually told chris and didier this last night i said we were talking about you and how this how this is kind of what makes you dope is the fact that you were able to do that and like i told them i would rather have someone in this case you make these mistakes and then be able to get honest and humble about them than not have made them in the first place because being able to get humble and honest is like character revealing which is more important than like being perfect i would rather have the person who can get honest and humble and grow than the person who's always perfect and can't Mm. so like i'm glad those things happened because it continues to reveal like the, the character that you are, which is like grown and like mature enough to be able to, and actually strong enough. Like when you, if we're able to get vulnerable and honest and admit our like faults, like that actually is strength. That mm. takes strength. Like Morrissey said, it takes strength to be gentle and kind. Like that's, that's, those are some of the illest lyrics ever because mm. like men are supposed to be like strong and like exactly. win and it's not real. It's like, that's actually a weak, like it's a weak trait to not be able to be vulnerable, to, to, to always present this image of image of perfection. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just 
look, I never even realized I had, like, I even lived, like, sheltered. You know what I mean? Or, like, live with a facade. I knew I always had, like, putting out something to the world because that's what people like or that's the brand that people believe in or that's what they want to watch on TV. It responded well to that, so you'll still be that because you want those validity or everything like that. But for me lately, like, from creation, from music and art and what I do, damn, being humble and validity, like, not seeking the validation, but being humble and, like, looking within yourself of, like, the full aspects of who you are. Damn, that shit helps me a lot more. It's some powerful yeah. shit. It helps me a lot more than like creating like this facade that like doesn't really exist. And, and yeah. the more we do it, the better we get at it. Like the the goal for me is to be able to hear feedback and and, and also know that I'm confident in some shit and be mm. able to like take complimentary criticism with mm. a grain of salt. Like that's even the next level is to not like completely avoid it, right? Cause like sometimes I won't even like show anyone. Like there, mm. I know people like this, like Justin Sizer. Like mm. he won't even like show anyone his shit Mm-mm. because he knows that any negative. I don't know what his motives are behind that, but sometimes when I do that, mm. it's like I'm doing it because I don't even. Cause I, cause if someone was to was to give me some negative feedback, it would shatter my shit. So the goal is to yeah. be able to like have like the strong house 100%. so you could throw some stones and they'll bounce around and 100 you can, you can like hear the feedback and like maybe pivot a little bit and like make adjustments but like not let other people's opinion yeah. define you you don't lose sight of your vision too like i used to like perform and like you know we would have like whatever like let's say we had like 5000 comments on a fucking youtube video and like one of them was like talking shit that one was like the one that mattered <laughs> yeah. and me and my therapist would talk about this like Dude, like my life we but but we would be at like a show and like everyone's like oh this it was so dope like everything you guys are so dope like you inspire me and anytime someone would give me a a, a compliment mm. I would sort of think in the back of my mind, like, you don't really know what's up. Yeah, it's, uh, totally. It, <laughs> you know, it's like 100%. You're just, you're just, and then the people that are like critiquing you, you almost are like, tell me more. <laughs> like, you, you kind of know what's up, huh? Yeah. So, like, that's bullshit. That's I, just really, bullshit. That's pure bullshit. What do you mean? That's like literally, that's literally feeding an insecurity. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Like, my, I know so. so like there's no secret and everyone i've ever worked with on tv media everything we're all the most in- insecure people in the world yeah to the point of like the host of like my last shows she like they all quit with like they all delete their twitters because they couldn't deal with like mm-hmm. someone telling them how they felt um and like my co-host she killed herself based on the negative aspects of people just going at her, the negative comments and everything. This woman like won tons of awards, wow. ill last career, she was 40s, been in like the industry for 25 years. Um, every, success, 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 she loved it, <laughs> loved it, loved it. But that negative shit, those few negative comments, those few negative things, it just really ate at her life. The few negative things ate at her life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and it does, and you could even get only positive. If you don't address those inner mm-hmm. insecurities, it's just another situation with Chester or fucking mm-hmm. Robin Williams mm-hmm. yeah. or Anthony Bourdain, or it's like we've seen it a million times. So it's like the, the results aren't important. What's important is that we're happy and like we can achieve greatness being fueled by insecurity and fear or being fueled by like love and inspiration. It, it, you can do, it, and that's why it's like, we, we want to like see things in like black or white. It's like, no. oh, well, if I can get vulnerable and insecure, I'm not going to be as driven and I'm not going to go as yeah. far, which on one hand is like kind of true, but like, it but it's not though. Like, and then on the other hand, it's like, oh, like I'm going to hold on to this, like insp- this drive from like fear and insecurity and like, jealousy and like wanting to like overcome everyone and like I'm going to win but like mm. you're not going to be happy 
Mm. So it's like, it doesn't really matter whether I succeed or not. The goal is to be happy. And then like, I can like do like meaningful work and like wherever it takes me, like is it takes that's, you. Well, that's God's it is. plan yeah. or whatever. And, and that doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the inspiration part. Cause we we've talked about this where like I was, I was driven by fear and insecurity and I accomplished so much. And then all of a sudden, like I was back in therapy and then I was like, I like fixed it. Like mm. I, I not like fixed it completely, but like I really worked on my anger mm. towards like my dad and like all this mm. other shit. And then the anger was like gone in a way, but it's still there, but it's like not as powerful. And I was like, I, I knew going in, I've been told the therapist, I was like, I'm afraid if I work on this shit, I won't be as driven or as ambitious or as successful. Mm. And I feel like this is what gives me like the drive. And he was, and he was like, oh, it's okay. And then we like, we did it. And then what literally what I was afraid of happened in a way. And I was like, fuck now, like I'm okay. <laughs> it was like, fuck, I'm okay yeah. now. So yeah, you take and, a breath. And like, so I would talk to like, I would talk to you and mm. I would talk to people and be like, what the fuck do I do now? You know? And then, yeah, like figure it out. Like it, you find new shit, like positive things that aren't detrimental to yourself to drive you. It's what is that? Right. Because like, so, um, me having Lyme disease, I've learned a lot about like my treatment and different patients and different people affected with Lyme disease, right? And I've come to find out, it's like this weird thing, is a lot of these profound people with Lyme disease or different types of diseases, a lot of these patients don't want to get better. They don't want to fully get better because this negative disease is now their identity, they create an identity that I'm the sixth person. So they get a lot of people feeling bad for them, right? So they've created this identity that this is what they are. Their job, their goal in life, what they're living for is to be infected with this d disease and always kind of fight this disease. Because if you're fighting this disease, then life is kind of on the back burner, right? Because you're mm -hmm. just fighting this disease. And the mindset is a lot of my doctors I talk to, these people don't want to get better because once they're better, they're cured. And they don't you're, have just a, a, you're just a normal mm, person now. They don't have like a purpose. They don't have a wow. purpose. You, you're, just, you're just a normal person now. What are you going to do with your life? Wow. And, I, he's, and he's looked at me and says, the reason you're healthy is because you had shit to live for. You didn't want to be sick, so you wanted to get better, so you mentally got better because you have shit that you want to do in your life. Lyme is not who you are. Right. And it's this funny thing. If we think about this forever, it's like, what is that passion? What did you, what are you living for? And like this happy, what is your happiness? And if you have this happiness, then this is what you're going to live for. You know what I mean? And living for anger, or living for the stress or living for this pressure of going, I've got to be the fucking best. You know, I wouldn't even fucking tell you even today. I'm like, I, cause I still have these affirmations every morning. I want to be the fucking best. I want to be this. I wouldn't fucking tell you if I made it when I made it because I look back on shit I did on TV and all this stuff that I didn't even like kind of, I fluked into it. Like this wasn't like my goal to be a TV presenter or anything like that. And I look back and I said, fuck, like I was pretty fucking successful. You did. Make but it. when I was fucking in it, I didn't do shit. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't done a goddamn thing. Yeah. And like I was talking with Pat about this the other day. He's like, am I going to be 85, like on my deathbed being like, oh, I did do all this stuff. Mm. But I was always looking at something that's not, I will be the best. Mm -hmm. Not I am the best. I am successful. I will be successful. But you are. I will have this. So I'm always living for the future, <clears throat> an intangible moment that's yeah. not in the present. And uh, I, I, I listened to the psychologist break down um, similar situation is why Tiger Woods had so many affairs, like the psychology yeah. of why he cheated. And it was like, um, so essentially Tiger Woods is like a kid and his dad's like, if you, if you get this stick and you hit this ball in this hole really, really good, then you'll be okay. Right. So mm -hmm. he like learned how to like, you know, hit it good and he got good and good and good. And he was like, the problem is he never taught him you're okay now ever uh, yeah, yeah. ever it was always then you'll be okay then you'll be okay then you'll be okay so now he's i mean all the women he had affairs with look exactly like his wife yeah blue blue eyed blonde hair like it yeah, wasn't yeah, he yeah. wasn't trying like it's it's not 
if he, it's not what it looks like, you know what I mean? Like mm. what he was really searching for was like validation because he was never taught how to validate himself. Mm. But but it, that might be what made him an amazing <laughs> athlete. But at the end of the day, is he happy? You know? Mm. Yeah. Like what about like our relationships? <clears throat> like forget about like monetary shit. Mm. Like what about like just having a fiance? Mm. Like that's you made it. Look, I you know it's it's crazy it's like i i find my i found myself like pr like pr and it, it's just me like so she's my first ever long relationship i ever had in my life right so i had like relationships for maybe three months is my longest relationship ever Whoa. until my fiance now i've been with her for almost six years right and it's like it's this thing it's like fuck you like pat just said that and i'm like yeah fuck like I did make it, you yeah, know, there's some true. people that are fucking multi-billionaires that fucking die alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. die alone. They never cherish these relationships or these friends. And I, I came, I remember I came to Pat last night. I called, I texted him. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm going to come through. I'm gonna just chill. And it's like, because all this shit that I have going on right now and the work and the music and this, 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 it's like the things that actually matter to me is like my friends. And like my fiance and like these conversations of being here or talking with Pat or po talking with you lurk on that real quick versus this crazy isolation of chasing this thing. It's, yeah. It's the people like we in have in a relationship. Like we're good. Like this, we're doing this podcast talking about like woke. Yeah. Concepts. This is amazing. And it's like, I did make it. I have a fiance like that's he made lit. it. Like, like I have like a good job, dude. Good job. <laughs> like <laughs> how you, you just made saw it. Jay. Oh, like, like <laughs> she's beautiful yeah, inside she, and Pat out. Just, Pat just brought up super, her Instagram. Super spiritual. She's like, like dude, a godsend, and, and it's like, and you're gonna help each other to grow in the same way that I have Veronica. Sometimes I just have to take a step back and be like, dude, like my dog, like my wife, like mm. I still have my fam, like like my parents. I have a good relationship with them. Mm. I have a brother. And like we're talking about concepts that like people sometimes never ever see. Like yeah, people are yeah. stuck their whole life. Yeah. And they're like on their deathbed going like fuck, like I just chased some shit. Well, I, I actually the whole my whole life. You're, you're totally right because there I watched this TED talk of this EMT who like had people on their deathbed dying like frequently on a, mm. and, he, and he talked about what he learned about people in their final moments. Oh uh, yeah. And uh, he, he, he would always, act, like, he said the number one thing people said was, I wish I spent less time at the office and spent more time with the, yeah, my loved 100. ones. Yeah, All of them. Yeah, it's like, crazy. dude, it's because, like, when you're at the, that shit, you don't go with, you don't, you don't die with that money. <laughs> so it's weird. Like, people have been asking me lately, how is Aruba? Yeah. And I feel like I'm just, I'm like, it was cool. I don't know. I've done a lot of traveling. Yeah. But, like. I feel like it's just as cool as hanging out with you guys yeah, or being on the couch with Veronica watching a good show. Like mm. that's, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I don't want to travel. That's cool too. But I want to travel with people I love. And like, it's just like, if you can, I've been able to on a good day, like transcend what I think my goals are i'm not saying i'm not taking necessary steps towards like doing things that like are like financially lucrative mm, and like, yeah yeah of course but but like I, i'm trying to like change my perception on like what like winning is you yeah know? I, I am too so it's like and and i honestly think that like if you can do that like when you're around people they like they can tell because i like remember like when i used to be around like people i thought i could gain f something from mm -hmm. like and this is something i really fuck with chris about mm -hmm. like you could literally bring like dr dre into this house and chris like would like not give a fuck yeah yeah he's weird like that like he doesn't give a fuck like for whatever reason i don't know it's like if you brought J David Fincher yeah. like in over to my house, like I would be like tripping. I guessed. I I would be like, yo, like, yeah. like I'm trying to like be a director. Yeah, like, yeah, what's yeah, up? Yeah. I don't know, but like, yeah, it's so hard to to unlearn 
a lifetime of learning something of one course. way. Like Wickham was talking about, um, you, you, oh, you were talking about um, like having a breakthrough in therapy and then like everything being okay. And you were like, oh, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. It's not driven by the same shit I was driven. Yeah. And then you were talking and then that made you think of something. Oh, how people it, with the Lyme disease, they, they are like, this their purpose is to mm, be yeah, yeah, yeah. sick, yeah. right? So like when you spend like literally 20 years like driven by fear, insecurity, the need for validation, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you get Lyme disease and yeah, you become yeah. woke for a minute, you're like, wait, uh, it's almost like, like they, we talk about this in AA, like it's a discipline. Mm. It's not like, oh, I'm fixed. What's the discipline? Unlearning, mm -hmm. building a new character that's not driven by these other things. Yeah. It's like now we have different outlook on life. So we need to like have a different way of living until the new character has a chance to like beat the old character because the old character is yeah, strong I, I mean i could go so hard like you I, but i could go so like i don't want to go this deep into it though but like how do you know when that, like, you ever hit that character well you don't i mean i know for sure i know for me like look first of all it's really hard to see change within yourself exactly but i have changed so much and i'm doing the work like so vigilantly that i even notice it within myself like i'm genuinely not engaging in as much like arguments with people mm. who disagree with me i'm not defining myself based on my achievements as much i'm valuing like relationships conversations like even wickham you, you remember when i told you like i didn't really care he's like you want to be like a big direct remember we were having that conversation yeah. and we were having another conversation by the campfire i was asking like what he wants and he almost didn't even believe me when i said like i don't really like care about the results as much anymore like i just want to give it my best shot and like do like this like it doesn't like it, it would be cool for it to like pop off but like it's not really like the main driving force. Like it's starting to, it's really like, the, like, like old character, new character. Mm. Like it's like here, right? Like the new character is like, you know what? I just want it to sound good. I just want to have a good intro. Mm. I just want it to be right. And those are the things that are driving me. Like I'm finding love in the process. Yeah. Right. Like when yeah. you show us your shit. But the, but what, but, but the reason that I was saying it's awkward at first, like you didn't know what to do because it's like, you're changing, like you're like rewiring your brain. Mm -hmm. Like you're not driven by those same things. Yeah. And it's almost like uncomfortable. Like peace is uncomfortable. Yeah. As fuck. But when you find that like love and inspiration in like some new shit or even like the same shit, but like a new platform, like, I don't know, whatever, like when I get to get like the movie thing that I'm trying to do, like, that's like purely from like a authentic, genuine, like loving, like wanting to like serve people and give them what I've been given. That's it. I don't, it's, it's probably a fucking pipe dream, mm -hmm. but like it's coming from like a different place and I'm like enjoying it. Like, with an intensity I've never felt before. Like it's like the fucking star Wars shit, like the force versus like the dark side, like the dark side can like, you can be powerful. Like mm. Darth Vader's powerful as mm. fuck, but like Yoda is like more powerful, but like, and it's harder to be that, you yeah. know, it's harder <laughs> to be like, he talks about like, it's, it, the force is like everywhere, you know? And it, like the analogies are so like spot on. Like George Lucas was so ill with it. it. He talks about, Oh, it's in everything around us and it's get quiet and like peace and like love and like understanding. And then like you, you feel the intuition, like it's different. The dark side is like, you know, sell your soul or whatever and like bow down to like the fucking money or the ring, like Lord of the Rings or like the fucking Sith Lord. He'll promise you all this shit. It's the same. It's all these amazing. And that's the other thing I love about Jordan Peterson is using these analogies for like life. Like we can be enticed by like success, fame, women, 
money, but those are like dark side. Like those aren't like really, really, truly val satisfying things in the same way that like love relationships, like spirituality, mm, and like yeah. that stuff is actually genuinely rewarding mm -hmm. in like the right way. I also think, think it takes some type of perseverance to like be in that peaceful spot and not throw a wrench in it and mm. like create problems for yeah, yourself course. just so you well, feel that's comfortable that old character trying to gain some traction because mm -hmm. we're so used to that like i've for sure drawn to chaos totally i'm i could it's what it's what it's, we're it's used tim, to tim veronica tim veronica tim veronica i'm back and forth creating mm. shit that's not even real yeah. tim's like dog i'm not even tripping <laughs> And in my mind, he's like unhappy with like everything I'm doing. You know, it's just the same way my dad was. It's yeah, all yeah, about yeah, the yeah. dads. Like, I don't know about. I think so. Like my dad. I was thinking I was thinking because I, think, I was thinking about Dude, also Star Wars. Also Star Wars. Dude. Like, it's never good enough for our dads because they want us to be the best version yeah, we can. Yeah, they're yeah, coming yeah, yeah. from a good place, but they don't realize they're instilling this like. Never good enough mentality. Being, I know, but it doesn't need I to thought, be I that think way. I, it's great. It's so crazy. It's like I was thinking about that the other day. Like, was driving. I was like, I was like, oh shit. I was like, <laughs> this might probably be a lot. Has to do with my fucking dad. Oh, it's, I, I was aww. like, this has a lot to do with. Because I was like talking. I was like, because I remember like I like do some business with my dad, do business stuff like that. And he would like email, like he would like. There's people you could say whatever the fuck you want to me, right? You can say whatever the fuck. I'm like, yeah, go fuck yourself. Like, I know what the fuck's going on, right? Then I get a fucking email or something from my dad. Mm. Be like, yo, why the fuck did you do this? And I would just, I'd go off, right? Yeah. I'll go fucking off. Yeah, like if I'm in the off. car. If like he's hanging out with us and you get Dude, that email. I'll like go you're fuck, like, I'll go fucking off, right? Like and then and Jade's like, yo, why do you fucking care so much? Like, why do you mm -hmm. care so much? And, mm -hmm. I, and I, that, that, that day I thought, I'm like, damn like is my sense of like validation stem from like my pops like 100%. probably like probably yeah. you know what i mean like a hundred fucking percent i see that i see that but once you see that dissect that and get emotionally like connected to that and then like mourn uh, it's complicated it's just shit. the practice bro you just got this is in the doing if you're conscious of that, being conscious is one thing and then practicing that conscious every day it's just a like learning experience yeah but the the next level of that which is where i'm at with my therapist 15 years later is like mourning the loss of the dad i never had that i wanted Whoa. Oh, shit. like mourning that loss like accepting him for who he is which is who i don't really Fuck with. need yeah like what i needed was like good job son mm. let's go let, let's yeah. talk about this song that you love mm. why do you love let's why did you like that movie? Let's talk about that, right? Wow. I never really got to like connect with my dad like on that level. I was tripping on this last night. Like yeah, I never cried. had. Yeah. <laughs> I never, wish I did. I never though. Had Yo, either. that sounds dope but, as fuck. But we can like we that. can give that to our children totally. yeah. and raise our children in a different way without like fear and like validation. That stuff will drive us, and we've done some dope shit because of it. But. If we do it the, a different way, like I've gone, I've come out of what's eating Gilbert grape. I remember when mm. I saw that movie in the theater, I got out of the movie theater and I was crying. Mm. I was like in fifth grade and I was like crying cause it, whatever. I think I was like, I was, I'm realizing right now that I was like desperate for like him to notice that it touched me in a way. And I wanted to like, I think I was just like looking for attention, reaching out, but mm -hmm. I also felt it, you know? Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that movie. No. Have you? Yeah. Leo and Johnny Depp. Right? Yeah. yeah. Also there's one with Johnny Depp where he, or there's one with um, Kevin Bacon where he gets locked in the cell. Um, I think it's called, um, he, he gets like wrongly accused of something and gets put in the hole for like 30 years and it's based on a true story and then when he gets out he's just like all fucked up and i got out of that movie like looking for attention too it was like raining i like took off my shirt i was like we're i'm like we're you know like that's so fucked up what happened to him like yeah. we sh we don't deserve to like you know how old were we really young 
I went through some really weird. Have, sh- have, have you seen Boyhood? Yeah. What did you think about Boyhood? It was that's cool. kind of how I fell after Boyhood. Oh, because really? that was literally like my life in a way. Mm. And uh, like the whole like the dad thing was like a huge thing in therapy, obviously. And because uh, like my dad like left when I was like ten. Hmm. so and then he like came back a couple years but like they were like divorced and just like wasn't the same you know but like before uh i was like daddy's boy like i was like way closer to my dad than my mom and uh me like the 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 theme of my teenage years was like the anger of his absence and Hmm. also like looking for someone else to like teach me how to be a man i hear you that's crazy my dad just texted me (laughs) and uh wow and I had to like really, re- that, that was what the anger was stemmed from, mm. completely that. And then we like worked through it and he was like, um, he was, the therapist was just like, he was like, why don't you just like sit there? He's like, he would just talk about my dad and then he'd be like, what are you feeling right now? And I'd be like, angry and like alone and like really angry and i would start mm. to like tear up and he'd be like why don't you just like sit there for a second i was like what and i oh, just and just like there. feel it and i felt it right dude. just That's like he shit says. from when i was like a little kid just coming back yeah and it was like me feeling it helped me let go of it mm. and it was crazy sometimes my therapist will say that to me he'll go like next time you're feeling that way just sit in it for a minute just sit in that feeling. Mm-hmm. Dude, I just had a really, really crazy epiphany. What? I, I got a text from my dad. And he's always sending me shit that's like, like, you remember last night? The, 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 the Her- Vincent Herbert? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. But like, you know what I realize? What, what do you, do you see what's happening? Yeah. Oh, he's trying to get trying you to, to talk about it. No, he's Yo. trying to reach out to Pat. The wow. same I've no, way I've, but I've, I was trying to do after the movie. Like I was trying to like get him to see. So now he's like, so at some point the roles reverse hundred and you become like mm. the adult that needs to like give your parents what they need. Like I was at my mom's today and she's just like, it's all about her. She's like a kid. Mm. You don't see me enough. Dude, you don't invite me anywhere. I don't get to. Ha- it's like, what are you fucking six ro- years yeah, old? They, like uh, my parents, all, it's, uh, those just the time where the roles reverse. Yeah. And, and, and so, like the, what well, you start being like the one there. Yeah, you're not there wow. yet. You're not there yet. But, 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 but what we can do in those situations is actually be there for them. Mm. And, have empathy and compassion. Although I don't know if that's ever healthy. Especially if your parents, especially if your parents never, like mine, were never really like yeah, disciplinary. Yeah, like yeah, they yeah. never really act like parents, you know? Mm. Like I used to fucking, I, like my mom would like buy us sacks and we used to get high with her. She was like the homie and my dad was like not really around. Mm. He, he was like, you know, we were at Tackaberry and fucking mm. doing whatever the hell we wanted to do. So now it's like, okay, all of a sudden you want to be fucking... Um, bear. Yeah, I don't know. I was just getting an Instagram story. Kind of. <laughs> Damn, he just lit. What the <laughs> fuck? But I feel like we're so far in at this point that we should like do another one on like what you're doing. Okay. Like now, like play some music. Yeah. Talk about like who you're signed to and like yeah. the artist, and then we can get more into like. This will be like the emotional, like therapeutic one talking but, about like what drives us. It <laughs> was like an hour and a half. Yeah. Like we're like, we're, we, we got to wrap this one up, yeah. or, but then we can like either stop it and do another one on like that. Or we could just do another one, like another day on that. Mm. We could do another one. I mean, like, I don't know. I thought this shit was lit. Yeah. So yeah. like, this is part one of, with DDA and part yeah. two with DDA will be, um, we're going to hear some of his music and um, we're going to talk a little about like culture and like music, yeah, yeah, the yeah. state of the industry right now as it relates to how it yeah, was sick. because and, you know, yeah. And so, Travis Scott. Yeah. <laughs> so let's wrap this one up. <laughs> All, right. All right guys. Well, thank you for tuning in. Pat will also PayPal you another $20. Yo. If you, got to this part. you know, Sizer hit me <laughs> yeah. up. Wait, what was what's it? What's so, so check it out. If you made it to the end of this episode, Email me at 
Email me, pat at Ridge Production. Code is DDA. Email me that code and I'll PayPal you $20. <laughs> oh my God. All right. I'm going to post this. I'm no, no, no. But you can't post it. You can't it. do that. That's cheating. No, they I'm just going to no, so like, post the link to the podcast. So, so there's only one way someone can hear that. And that's if they yeah, actually listen to me. Yeah. Well. So it could be a thing, you know, uh, that's but, cool. but this, this, this offer expires next month. Yeah. So if you're yeah, dipping yeah, yeah. back into the archives, that's not it. Yeah. All right, peace. Wait.